Hey, fight fans. So uh, it's not Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather, but we got the defenders coming up, and uh, there's a good fight there, too. Check it out. Goodness. It's a fight we've all been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. Maybe yeah, just yeah, me? Yeah. See, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that, it was great. I, like I know that. I know we're watching the screen, but it's just uh there's we don't get to see like that cool intro on the screen here. It's just defenders. With all the different colors. Very yeah. excited. <laughs> Alright. Hey guys, you are watching Black Hollywood Live. We're covering the Defenders episodes five and six. Take shelter and ashes, ashes. Um, I'm Rick Hong. You can follow me on all social media at Rick Hong, R I C K H U N G. And I'm joined by my other defenders. Hey guys, I'm Joelle Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joelle Monique and every week at blackgirlnerds.com. And I'm April Dawn. You can follow me on Twitter and YouTube at April 13 Dawn. Um, all right, guys. Uh, we also were supposed to have Jesse Klein, but he's feeling a little under the weather. But he is Captain Marvel himself, so you can follow him on all social media, or at least on Twitter at Jess Klein and the number one. He's not the only one, but he's the number one. So Jess Klein one. Uh, tweet him there if you have things or like uh, inside that you want from him about these next two episodes. And uh, what did you ladies think? It was super. I really like this episode. It is definitely my favorite episode of the season so far. Uh, it was all the fight scenes that I've been waiting for. Uh, good. Feel good about it. How April. did you feel about it? I liked five, but I liked six more, and I'm excited to talk about that ending when we get Ooh. to it. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, no, for me, what I liked about five is the symphony. Yes. The symphony, it's, it's almost a different version of, uh, like what ride the Valkyries or yeah, you know, just just like they have a symphony and then like they have each person, each enemy like getting together. Which to Jess's uh, do, he was like saying, you know, he's trying to figure out who would kind of pair up against each person. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't just as we find out, it wasn't just the black sky, but we had the other fingers of the hand that show up for this thing. And I mean, what an intro for um, what Murakami <laughs> he just started oh, off and like goodness. just crashing through the roof. It's amazing. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, and then just one just crazy, just big battle. Although I'm sitting here thinking, all right, this is awesome, but like Alexandra just kind of weasels away. She's like, peace out. She just, <laughs> this is how she survives. Is She's like, and fade to the background. No one will remember I was here and I'll live for another thousand years. I love Alexandra. <laughs> well, and, and see, it's, it's one of those things for me where I'm wondering that, you know, I mean, Sigourney Weaver is a beautiful lady. She's an amazing actress. She's not quite in her younger years. So I don't know if it was a contractual thing to say, like, okay, hey, there's a certain amount of moves that I can do, even yeah. though you can always use body doubles. Yeah. But, um, or yeah, if it's just like a strategic, methodical thing of like, you know what, let, I'm, I'm sick. I, I like some sort of terminal disease mm -hmm. that we don't, we, we never really find out what her, terminal diseases, right? They're just dying. You know, they use they use all the stuff they were using to keep themselves alive to revive Black Sky. They don't have any more of that. That's why they have to open the door. Uh, I think she's just running, she run low on her forever juice. That's how I process <laughs> that information. Juice. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. But no, because it was cool because I was, I was excited to, I didn't think like in this series that we would see any version of like choreography fight action from her but then we did see it a little bit with yeah, her earlier. against against black sky slash electra mm -hmm. so i was excited to kind of see maybe she was going to do some more things and if you guys uh watch online our very own after buzz roxy stryer actually talks to them a little bit too um she couldn't get too in depth with them because of all the contractual obligations of like not being able to talk about the series but um there was i think some a brief talk about Kind of the fight scenes and everything. But who is Roxy like, talking to? She's talking to, she actually got to talk to Sigourney and wow. Elodie Young together. Very cool. Okay. So, yeah, so go check it out um, after Buzz TV, Comic Con, uh, Roxy Stryer, and uh, Sigourney Weaver, Elodie Young. But so I was hoping to kind of see, I guess it probably would have been more of a, probably a body double, but it still would have been cool to see more of her kind of doing her thing as opposed to just kind of weaseling out. Definitely. I think it goes back to her statement earlier about saying that Alexandra doesn't like to get her hands dirty. So I think that's more why she left. It's interesting because it, it definitely plays into it story-wise that way. But I also thinking back on some of the great villains from the Marvel Netflix series, I guess it is a little frustrating not to have seen her go full badass. Like I would have liked to have seen her like fully take someone out so we could all have been like, damn. Right. Is real, it could be. Like, 
Like, we got a taste of it, but I, I totally feel what you're saying. You see, like, I miss seeing her do a full action sequence. Yeah, yeah, Demones, and uh, sorry if I'm butchering your name, man, or lady. Uh, <laughs> I think this episode, she's fading in the background is because she's sick and the black sky is in her proxy. Ah, uh, true, that's right. Just Yeah, exactly, just send, send. Uh, why not? Yeah, it's like, let, let other people do your fighting for you. Mm -hmm. Or she believes in the black sky enough that, hey, the black sky is going to take care of everything. I don't really need to get, yeah, it's like you said, my hand's dirty. So, uh, I mean, so what do you think of like the different pairings of the fights? Um, mostly I just liked watching Luke help out uh, Danny. Uh, again, I'm talking about seeing bits and pieces of their potential future relationship with Heroes for Hire. Uh, it was really cool to see him, you know, like see them kind of work as a team here and there. That was fun. I liked seeing Matt take Electra to the side and try to talk to her, see if she was still in there in any way. Oh my goodness, Matt, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it's like, it! It's like, it's, like, it's like knocking on the door. It's like, hey, do you remember? Do you remember me? You're there somewhere, help. right? Talk to me. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, you love her, and that's beautiful. But like, there's a fight with like thousand year old beings in here. Like, this maybe isn't the best time if you try to win your girlfriend back. It's just messy. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's like the thing though. It's like if you ladies, like I cover the strain, you know, and. I feel like it's like The Walking Dead. You know, when the people turn zombie, mm. they still want to keep their loved ones around for some whatever reason. Mm, like, they don't want to chop off their head or stick the thing in there. So it's kind of the same. Like, mm -hmm. just you just, you're physically, like, right, you see the person that you fell in love with or that you cared about, mom, dad, whoever it is, and you just don't have, like, the heart to... You can't help but feeling like there's still something of them in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the zombie has to die or more people get infected. You need to be practical. It's the end of the world. <laughs> no, what I liked about that, the, the that... I guess like what side parking lot scene when they're fighting is mm -hmm. the whole um, where she Murakami comes in and she just boom just knocks knocks him to the wall mm -hmm. and he just like falls flat just like just like yeah get out of my way boom yeah I like that we get to see how much easier she's taking it on Matt though it kind of really pushes that story forward of like maybe there's somebody in there um, cause she just straight murks everybody else <laughs> like, yeah but you know she, she lets him have a fight so that's kind of cool I liked the end of the fight when Stick went full on mist, uh, Master Splinter and they escaped through the sewer yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I remember <laughs> yeah I know right I mean there's gonna be so many I, like I said I think somewhere in the lore I mean I don't think that the creators of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles apologize for the fact that it steals from uh, that it steals from Daredevil mm -hmm. the mythology of Daredevil why like, should they really? Because it's not, it's not the same comic book. Like we have Daredevil stole, uh, well not Daredevil, but Iron Fist stole from uh, like Kung Fu movies at the time and Luke Cage stole from black exploitation films. Like, meh, you know, we never had Turtles in a Sewer before, it's new. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then um, you, you kind of mentioned it. Like, yeah, it's like clearly like Luke Cage is, at least initially his enemy for now is uh, Sawande. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it just predictable and a little like, yeah, no, all right, fine, whatever. I mean, we knew this for a while. Entertainment Weekly released the photos of him on set forever ago. Um, but it was still cool to see them go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, uh, especially you know, like Sawande's techniques, which were so kind of weird and different uh, from, I think, any other villain I've ever seen. Sawande's cool and not actively a part of the comic books. And if he could come back and around, that would be great for me. I would appreciate it. Yeah, we'll get to, <laughs> we'll get to the white hat in a little bit, but I mean the the confusing thing about me with him is that it was the moves that he was doing on Luke because mm -hmm. he has because we don't really get a full explanation of what kind of powers that he has that he's able to hit Luke and make Luke move, whereas like they're a version of at least in my mind they're a version of the monks or the whoever from Kun Lun. Whereas when Danny's fighting him, I mean, Danny's not even making, like, any impact unless he's got his, like, branded Iron mm. Fist. So, like, that was a little... I mean, as, as we talk more about the White Hat and so on, day, like, I, that, that's a little bit more of what I wanted was an explanation of, like, what is his technique or why his power that he's able to at least move Luke. Once again, mm -hmm. I think these shows suffer from not... I don't say, like, a lack of flashbacks, but from a lack of context with a lot of these characters like it would have been super dope that instead of telling us about the scene where they leave if we could have seen like an interpretation of the hand leaving even just like something brief and animated um i don't feel close to any of these characters like i kind of like Sawande and i like alex is pretty cool but i feel like they don't have the kind of gravitas that like a wilson fisk has um, even a, and a, even as a group, like when they were together, it wasn't like oh, here we go. Um, and so I, 
I think the fights are well coordinated. I think we're we've got some pretty good development, at least from uh, Daredevil, but from some of the other characters. Man, I mean, I don't know if you guys felt that too, but it kind of dragged for me. Yeah, no, the, fi- the fighting it or just kind of the dynamic. Just the character development of of the villains up until this point, I guess, and even after the fight, I just. I don't know. Maybe it's because we still feel so far from Kun Lun and the desire to get back doesn't really resonate with me as a viewer. Okay, so then let's let's rewind this then. So this series is eight episodes. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like if there was filler for some of those backstories to make it 13 like the normal other series, do you think that would be more satisfying to you or not, just get to the action? Not with the way the writing is right now. And it's not a diss at the writers. It's just if, if, the, if they had stretched it out and it was still more of like storytelling in the same way that Iron Fist was, I would have had that same reaction of like, let's get to the point. So I do think they made the smart choice in cutting down to eight episodes, but I still don't feel that they were able to make a strong enough connection for us to the villains. Like Alex started off really cool, like her entrance, the way she was talking to Madame Gao, um, even through here where she's like telling everybody like, look, no, Black Sky is it. Like that's who we're focused on and she's gonna be our savior. Um, it's cool, but it's still not, we never get like the white picture scene with Fisk or, um, you know, where we get like some of the purple man's flashbacks and we see, you know, what he endured as a child in order to make him come into this. We don't get a lot of that. And so I guess I just feel distant from them as people. April, do you think if you had 13 episodes versus eight and like filled that in, would that be satisfying for you? Or you're still, are you like, do you like it the way that it is? I would have liked more from the villains. Like, I feel like they just scratched the surface with Alexandra, like how they started talking about that she had a child that died. I Did they ever tell you how she died? No. Yeah, it's kind of just like, quick, let me fill you in. Th- that's the problem is that, uh, gosh, it's like, I don't know if it's the strain or the, yeah, there's just certain episodes where like, they need to, they do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's in television writing where it's like, okay, instead of like having to go film these scenes, we'll just give you a quick, We'll just tell you the information. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll just tell you the information. Or, I'm okay, you and I covered, for Black Hollywood, you and I covered uh, Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. What do you think if they, because like, my problem with that show was there was too much about him being bratty and it was versus it was him versus um, the brother and sister and the dad. What if they took a little bit less of that out and then weaved in maybe some of like the Alexandra... Sawande story somewhere maybe in there to go into the Defenders. Would that be better? I think it would have been way cool, especially if we had Alexandra maybe like the last two or three episodes of Iron Fist because what Iron Fist did really well was cement Madame Gao as top dog to so see, to see her usurped. And not even usurped, but just for us as viewers, it would feel like uh, she had been taken down a peg. But we get to reveal that whole other side of her in that moment. So that when you come into uh, the Defenders, you understand the strength of the hand. Um, you know that you still have a couple members left to meet. Um, I also think that had we gotten a better version of Kun Lun from Iron Fist, right. like this beautiful place of peace and harmony and balance, that that would have transcended to be like, oh, well, we understand we have to get back there. <laughs> like, I don't want to be in dirty New York. Like, I would totally choose Kun Lun over that. Instead of just seeing him get beat with sticks by monks, which is what they kept showing us in flashbacks. In right. Iron Fist. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll see, I guess, see more in season two of Iron Fist. Or maybe that does play out. Maybe your critique of, maybe that'll play more into the Iron Fist mythology, which could maybe help the storytelling for that show. Maybe. So I mean, but Grant, we won't we won't see that for a little bit. But no, so like what you were saying, April, about the whole like Alexandra, like there's like that scene between Alexandra and like the black black sky slash Electra, mm-hmm. and she's like, yeah, she's filling her in on like, well, this is this is kind of how she's trying to play that whole like, you're like my pseudo daughter that died, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> which was again too soon, too soon. Like again, I just, mm, I really and the thing is like I like all of these characters conceptually, but the way that they've been fleshed out here or moved around the chessboard feels both hurried and uh, like they just didn't have enough time. And I know they're doing these so fast and on a shoestring budget. Um, and so I don't want to be, because I'm super grateful to have the Netflix Marvel series. Like whoever thought we were going to have a Defenders TV show. Absolutely. That's, that's super I mean, dope. That's amazing. Um, but I, when we get to this moment, you, you kind of want to be like, oh my gosh, yes, like, they can help each other. Like, I just wanted to see some part of Black Sky 
enjoy being black sky because i think from what we learned about electra is she was never quite powerful enough uh, she's always kind of this person who was at odds with what she wanted and what she was being commanded to do and we see her take joy in a fight so wouldn't she take like a thousand percent more joy in just being the most kick-ass fighter wouldn't that just kind of be everything until daredevil comes along and starts screwing that up and i think having somebody who is like stick but kind of more infinite and more like use your power i don't want to hold you back i want to let you go i think that mother daughter scene could have been very affecting but we didn't know enough about either of them and the situation didn't really feel it didn't feel necessary to be like look i need you to know that you're my daughter we didn't get that emotional build up so it's a bit frustrating so marvel listen to joelle we need sigourney <laughs> weaver and iron fist too with more of that story weaved in so that we can go back and enjoy kind of like Alexandra Reed a little bit more. Uh, you know, but that also leads into, so then what did you guys, what did you ladies think of the group versus Swanee? I mean, like my issue was, okay, wait, here's like this weird, powerful guy, but yet then he's tied to a chair and like that can hold it. <laughs> okay, first I will say the kidnapping of Swanee was dope as hell. Like when we weren't sure what was happening, she's like, I got it. I was like, yes, we did it. We finally have like a leg up because it seems, insurmountable five infinites and you know uh well four and um black sky it's just what are you gonna do uh so to hear that column was great but yeah when we got to he's tied to the chair i mean i know he's been knocked around a bit and i mean iron fist has to use his chi to call stuff so maybe that maybe his chi is not so pretty we don't know enough about them or their powers or how they use them to you know, confidently make these calls. Um, if you want to make it your headcanon, which oftentimes I'll do for many TV shows, where I'm like, you know what? I'm just making this headcanon so I can enjoy this property. Um, I think, yeah, you know, he just hadn't summoned his chi. I thought that that's some of the best comedy writing we've had in the series so far, mm. um, was the conversation around Swan Day in that room. So, successful. April, I mean, like, would you, would you have preferred, like, Ch a chain like chains maybe <laughs> like a chain yes. and a padlock something that made him seem more intimidating and powerful than just sitting in the chair there you go <laughs> yeah no and Joel, you are you're actually you're absolutely right this is a great episode but the issue is because they're going so fast yeah we don't know we don't have the pieces of their backstory and their the limitations of their powers um which i have a critique but that's in a different comic universe am i even gonna bring it oh god okay <laughs> so but uh no i was just thinking like you know magic lasso might work yeah, you know in that yeah. scenario and everything but um well i mean it's, but then i want to say like not only did we enjoy the fight but the other awesome piece to this episode and we were talking about it is to seeing the i guess the b team I mean, seeing like, you know, Trish and, you know, they're, they're all told yeah. like your loved ones are in danger. So then we all of a sudden we see the formation of Foggy, Karen, Claire, Colleen, Misty and Trish in a room together. And they're all there. But and we have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. We all the pieces. We all know who they are. They don't know each other. So it's it's hard. It's like when watching that scene, it's like, this is great. But I'm just like, you don't you don't know Foggy? You don't know Karen. <laughs> I mean, I guess the great thing about the series is watching everyone meet one another. Like every time somebody meets, I'm like, oh, it's the first time they're in a scene together. <laughs> um, and kind of seeing their personalities interact. I like the idea of the police. My producer brain is like, this is brilliant. Like one room, like we could shoot in this for days. We don't have to worry about anything. Uh, very convenient schedule wise. Um, but it also just seems like, is it too convenient? story-wise you know what i mean like i know real irl shooting it very simple to do but if you're looking story-wise like the, everybody's technically a suspect missy you know is kind of harping on everybody um nobody knows what they're doing and the police don't ever seem to try to dig deeper i know they don't want to give up any information because they're dealing with mystical beings and so it's kind of weird um but I just feel like the police would have kept them all in separate rooms and tried to get stories. And I think an interrogation series of like scenes would have been really cool to be like, what does everyone know? I just wish, okay, here's my problem. Missy is a cop and I don't feel like she ever gets to do her job. Missy just gets yelled yeah, at and left right. in the center of things. Whereas I want Missy to move into being a detective earlier in the series. Like I, I wish here she would have been like, okay, let me get your stories. So that we could start trying to figure out who knows what and who's lying so that she could try to stop them. I think Missy should be a much bigger roadblock than she is helpful at this point in time because she's 
a cop and you're not doing things by the law. Um, and then also that would have been a great way so we could start seeing her move away from being a cop to being a vigilante. And why does she make those decisions? And I don't feel like, in, in these two episodes, I think would have been a perfect time to start bringing that out and we don't see it at all. April, do you, would, would you, would you, what did you think of the, the B team and the huddle of the police station? I feel like it was kind of anticlimactic. After we got all those characters together, I wanted there to be, I, to be more excited for it, but it was just kind of like they were thrown in the room and I didn't get any dialogue that I really wanted from any of them. So, I mean, so I want to pose the same question. Uh, okay, so maybe not, okay, so we're at eight episodes. So maybe not eight episodes. Let's go maybe 10 episodes. And if they spent maybe, ha like, say, like an epi episode-ish where you you have your, you know what? Hey, Marvel, you know what? Just get Joelle to be like a writer on this show. You know, she's got some really, really good feedback and ideas. I like it. No, but if you had like 10 episodes where you could have done that, where, yeah, I, I can see, like, I kind of like that idea, then not... 13 maybe but maybe 10 would it have been do you you like that idea maybe i think that's totally doable i i tend to like 10 episodes for miniseries as opposed to eight anyhow uh just for me timing wise that generally feels better um stories are as long as they need to be so sometimes it works better um but yeah i feel like they were just dealing with so many characters and by not choosing they either needed to do that extend to 10 give misty make misty a roadblock for them something that they ha actually have to interact with instead of trying to just move around her all of the time um give us a little more background on our villains um or they should have made like one member of the defenders the key focus and one member of the hand the key focus and just try to tell those stories linearly and then write the other characters in those scenes well enough that we were kind of fleshing them out as we go along um because if we had just focused on daredevil and black sky and Alex was just the creepy lady we didn't know a lot about, whispering things in Black Sky's ear, making her move around. Um, and Daredevil is running away from the team. The team's like, we need you! And they're trying to like chase him around to bring him back uh, down to Earth. I think that could have worked really well, too. Um, like, if I was going to judge the Defenders as to where we are now, I'd give it a solid C. Like, everybody's there. The comedy writing is pretty good. The fight scenes are better than we saw in Iron Fist, on par with Daredevil. Um, you, they brought all of the aspects of the characters in I just don't think they blended them well you know I feel like I feel Luke Cage in this I feel Jessica you, you get aspects of all of them but they don't feel anywhere near a team and I know they're not a team yet but I don't feel like we're moving in that direction and I don't see potential for these four individuals to be a team yet I think we should go to 10 episodes build up the B team get more backstory from our villains and then more bonding with the defenders I think that would have really helped the series and it takes about, uh, what, I think I want to say it takes roughly five episodes to where we actually see Daredevil in his Daredevil yeah. outfit, which is fine, which is totally fine. And then, you know, like it's, it's, it's like the run-in of Jessica Murakami and the, the great line from the trailer. He's like, nice ears, and he's like, oh, they're horns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really good moment. I like when um, Stick is talking to... Um, Matt and he's saying how he wants him to lead the defenders and he says he doesn't want to do it and the next scene we see him interrogating Sawande and then he's in his suit so it's, I feel like he's already taking on the helm of leader even if mm -hmm. he doesn't want to you do I'm, see him shifting into that position mm -hmm. I mean so what, what did you ladies think of uh, I don't know if you remember so I'll bring it up but the story that I thought it was a cool story and I had to kind of rewatch it again of Sawande telling Stick about the chase and how I think he was they had captured him in a mm. bit like they had captured him somewhere and he's with the chase but what he had his hand people do was to lock everybody in so eventually like they were getting uh cabin fever i guess and it's it's kind of like what i got from it they're getting cabin fever or like they started running out of food and water yeah and they started turning on themselves but the one thing i couldn't figure out was it because sawande had some sort of a power that made them I just don't think they could leave because he brought his crew up, surrounded the building, and then they starved, and then they turned to him because they didn't have water, and they were like, save us. That was how I picked it up. How yeah, you think? that's what I took from it, too. They just, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so if, if you guys ever watched the movie, they did this They did this in the movie uh, Taps way back, one of Tom Cruise's first movies, Sean Penn, Timothy Hutton, but kind of the same thing. Uh, yeah, okay. I just was, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just like Swan Day. It's just like there's potential, and maybe they'll they'll bring that stuff up in hopefully it'll look at Luke Cage 2 or I mean if Iron we get so one day back dot 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 I don't know yeah your, fa your favorite new... I love him but I don't know if he'll be back 
<laughs> uh, yeah, and then so then we see like there's Bakudo and the four fingers, and they have so Bakudo returns, and I really wasn't sure if he was going to be back in this. I mean, I know they alluded to it, or if they were going to bring him back for Iron Fist two, or if he's still going to be maybe a villain in Iron Fist two. I don't know, but I was happy to have him back. Bakudo's dope as hell. <laughs> like I really like that watching him fight, um, and I also like that he is just a much just as much villain for colleen as he is for danny um i think colleen is such a strong fighter i just really enjoy it. I'm, I'm looking forward to them butting heads again yeah no Col- yeah colleen wings or colleen wings great just just Hendwick, the actress does an amazing job mm-hmm. as colleen wing for sure um i think that's like the one i realized after watching the scene because grant this is about the defenders and not the b team yet mm-hmm. but that scene in the restaurant when they're all fighting and then, like, later on, they move to Colleen in another scene. And I was like, oh, man, that would have been kind of cool to see her. But I know that, like, her and Danny had this conversation where he's like, you haven't seen what they can do. Because mm. she's, like, super skeptical about the rest of them. She's like, forget them. It's just about us or about us and against against the hand. Because yeah. mm-hmm. she's got her own personal vendetta against Bakudo for misleading her, I guess. But um, which eventually, like, we see, I mean, the death of your favorite character. Yeah, and which is where I say I don't know if we'll see him again. Uh, his head just lobbed off, flying around. <sighs> How anticlimactic, though. Like, right? We have, I, I, we have five bit. episodes of the white hat. He's here. He's doing the things. He's bad. And then he's tied to a chair with some rope, and then he cut his head off. That's it? That's all anybody had? To, this guy brings down cities, and we only needed to cut his head off? Like, we had the guillotine. Like, this could have been done a long time ago. Um... It's weird. I don't know. I, I'm i just not quite sure um, why we have all of them if it's going to be this easy to kill them. Like, why do we need the whole fist here if we can just chop off their head? Like, I feel the same way about another character we lose. Are we allowed to talk about that yet? Yeah, we'll get to it in a second. Yeah, we'll okay. get to it in a second. But, like, so you ladies are saying that more the, the chopping of the head as opposed to shocking, it was more disappointing. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because it's it too simple. Yeah, I mean, I just, he's the white hat. Like, if it had been like Colleen's fight with Bakudo, where there's a long fight in the rain, and then, like, we think we killed him, but it bodies we don't know. Um, I feel like that, even if the end result had then been we cut off his head, but the fight was hard. It took all, the entire team, a bloody long fight, um, and everyone's battered at the end. But we cut off his head, and the, and okay, now we know what we have to do. We have to cut off their heads. That's fine. But it just was like snip. I was like, wait, really? That was it. <laughs> I was disappointed. So I mean, so it's a little bit of like a, a build, 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 like of a cool character, build, build, mm-hmm. build, and it's like, eh. it's, it doesn't even like hit. We didn't even get to it's, see his full operation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it doesn't hit his heard about potential. It. Yeah. I would have much rather if we could have seen the kid. We see the kids pull a job. You know, we see the mom after. You know, she gets bad news. It's just everything, it's just weird to me the moments they chose to film. Like, I like the story. I'm not too happy with what parts of the story we saw. I think seeing the White Hat, like, run his underground organization and seeing how that's taking Luke City down further gives Luke a much more charged position to go in there and try to figure out how to kill this guy. It's something he's clearly uncomfortable with. Like, Luke's not a killer. He doesn't want to be a killer. Right. Um, but seeing him push to the point where he's like, you know what, we, he has to go. And I'm not just not sure we got there. Uh, yeah, and then like finally at this at the end of this episode, that's it's kind of Electra sniffing out who she thinks that she was in her past, or Black Sky mm-hmm. sniffing out the Electra version of herself and going into like Matt's bed. Yeah, <laughs> she curls <laughs> she up in Matt's sleep bed somewhere familiar. <laughs> um, I mean, okay, so it it does lead us into the next episode, which you know, there's very. It's it's interesting because we see the unrattling of the hand, Alexandra, and also the unrattling of the defenders, unraveling I guess in terms of like their their personalities kind of doing their thing. I don't know what you ladies thought of the whole the defenders versus Iron Fist are just kind of like <laughs> I mean kind of just that was kind of the funny. breakdown of their possible team building. Yeah. Uh, again, we had some co- good comedic lines in there. I thought that that was kind of whipped together nicely. Um, I, don't know. I mean, April, I don't know if you like if you, if there was 
so you, you ladies probably thought that the last episode is better to see the hand versus and the hand and then the defenders versus uh, each other as opposed to the defenders kind of like having their little infighting. No, I kind of like the infighting. I feel like especially a group that has thrown together like this one, who none of them really want to be here except Daredevil, who's trying to convince himself he doesn't want to be here. Um, I feel like they would fight. Again, it's just not a standout and or memorable fight, which is probably the most... You have like four superpowered beings. Why, why is that fight lackluster? Why, why not let them go like all out on each other? And then let Luke Cage be like referee at the end because that's he's the Hufflepuff of the group. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I kind of like that they were like, look, Danny, for your own good, you stay put and be here and not rock the boat. Um, I like again the story of it is fine, but what we see of it is just meh. It's so frustrating because I've wanted this for so long, and now that we finally got it, I'm kind of disappointed with how they've chose to handle the storyline. Like I didn't really care for the fight scene with the defenders it the choreography wasn't that great to me and i was just disappointed with it are we you know i'm hoping that they'll fix us and i'm sorry like people probably hate me for this but it's still it's still like it's still danny just being a little bitch Mm -hmm. yeah and it's always it's always about him just being a bitch as opposed to just being like all right guys i'll lay low I'll lay, I mean, Grant, I wouldn't want to either in that situation if I know that I'm on a mission to do something and nobody wants to just cower and just sit on the couch while everybody else is doing mm-hmm. their thing. But well, again, Danny's not a monk. Danny's not a monk, and that is, to me is the weirdest thing. If you grew up from 10 to you know mid-20s every day practicing, we see you get beat down, but we don't understand. Like, the only thing that drives Danny story-wise so far is competition, essentially, and, and now a sense of failed duty, which are decent motivators but you like love is a much stronger one you know what i mean if but i don't get a sense that he loves kunlun or anyone in it and so i don't really care that he's trying to save it or understand why he has any loyalty to it um and here like you have a group of people who are trying to figure out how to help you like no one here is against you um and they're they're like happy to let you use your powers once we have a plan if they take you they win (laughs) like so the idea that he as a monk can't sit down for a few seconds and contemplate a plan. You know what I mean? If he had sat and thought about a different plan and wanted to reenact that and they were like, no, he's like, guys, I know that this is what's going to work. That fight makes a lot more sense, but you're right. Just whining and being like, no, I have to go out there headstrong and determined without any forethought. It's just not a Danny. It just doesn't feel like Danny ran the character at all. And it's very weird. I would picture that more from Jessica Glocking off without a plan, like, I just have to do something. That's totally Jessica's route. Um, it's just weird coming from the hippie monk. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the hippie monk. All I can picture is when Zach came in here wearing his, like, weird poncho. Yeah. And, and he's like, so Zach Wilson, who, Zach Wilson, who's on uh, After Buzz TV, many, many Marvel shows, and he actually covered this for the Defenders for After Buzz. But when we did Iron Fist, he was wearing a poncho no shoes in the studio and he did it again for defender so if you guys want to watch him on there he's great too it's but, it's, so, but just when i think of like yeah hippie monk it's like i think mm-hmm. of like zach wilson dressed up here and <laughs> putting his like all. putting his foot up here with, the, <laughs> with like zach. walking around the studio with bare feet's gross <laughs> but uh well i mean so is there hope though with you know they're hopefully they're building towards this i don't know if they've really announced it but with the luke and danny part of like their banter when same thing with Danny. It's kind of weird that it's just like, oh, I've got this, like, they at least explain. I had this, like, tied rope thing where if he pulls on one part, it gets tighter somewhere else. But same, you know, I'm still kind of, it just takes rope to, even though Danny's, I guess, a little bit more human. Mm-hmm. Well, and again, we have Danny's, like, the chi explanation, which is a little weak, but at least the story had addressed the issue of, like, look, if Danny's weak and he can't summon his chi, he can't use his fist. Okay, dope. Got it. Um, but you'd think thousand-year-old beings would just always have access to to their chi. Yeah, but I don't know if you ladies like the the possible direction that they're maybe taking Luke and Danny. Like, there's a lot of banter between them and it's talking. It's the only thing that's going to and... save Danny. It's the only thing that's going to make him palatable to audiences that don't already enjoy him. I know there's a strong audience out there that's like, look, Danny's okay, it's not great, but it's good, and we like the character, we like the actor, uh, which is all fine. But I think that there's a large population out there not a fan of Danny's, and I think the best way to bring him into the fold is to have the guy everybody loves, Luke, who is soft and squishy and potentially his partner 
make him that banter. I mean, every time Danny's come close to the Danny I was hoping to get, the Danny from the comics is when he's interacting with Luke. Right, right, right. I feel like they're surrounding him with characters that are stronger and helping him, like Luke, Colleen, and uh, Night Nurse Claire. Like, they're such lovable characters that they're strengthening him, but he's still such a weak character. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you guys in the chat, like, what your what your thoughts are about Luke and Danny or Danny or if there's if there's a need for a possible Heroes for High, which maybe kind of get into predictions a little bit later. But, um, and, yeah, and then so, the, and, but we also kind of see the, the team. So we see all that, we see that pairing up, and then we see mm -hmm. the teaming up of Matt and Jessica, and like they figure out this, like, okay, there's this weird hole <laughs> at the bottom of Midland Circle, so let's go talk to the talk to the architect's like daughter and see i don't know i don't know what i thought about that scene when they're the because that, that's jessica jones part and it's a little bit of luke because he's the lawyer mm -hmm. and then she's the investigator so you, you approach somebody you go to their house and you start talking to try to figure out in pieces of information but the whole piano scene was a little weird to me okay here's the thing uh actually this is one of my favorite scenes so far in the show really okay you yeah, liked really. it all right well one because i feel like Jessica and Matt have such good chemistry together. I really like watching them on screen. I like how at odds they are with each other, but also how similar they are to mm -hmm. one another. Um, and I like, we get a softer side of Jessica, which so rare to see Jessica being like, using her detective skills beyond just trying to solve a crime and actually peering into a person. Um, and for her to be able to talk about Matt in such an intimate way without knowing these details just yet, gives a lot of insight to, to us as a detective of her as a detective. Yeah. Um, and then the piano thing, I was like, Matt's using his powers. <laughs> I was really excited when he was like, I could go over play the piano. I'm like, what are you doing, Matt? And then he's like, see, there's a weird sound here. I was like, oh, okay, this is Matt using his powers without them showing us. I thought it was kind of clever, actually. I liked it. Um, I don't know, I like the daughter too, just that actress, I thought she did a good job. She did a really good role. job. She did a really um, good job. Look forward to seeing her again and other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I hope she comes back in this. She's kind of cool. Um, yeah. I. I I like that coming together. This is the kind of team bonding moments I've been looking for throughout. Um, I think Matt and Jessica have the best coming together team moments. And then uh, Luke and Danny have really good kind of dialogue, but their actions kind of aren't quite team ready yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's unfortunate with that, with just like really quick, I'll just touch on that, is just that it seems like it's like just, it's almost like too much of a slow burn of people still trying to figure out Danny Rand's voice. Mm. I mean, and this is, I mean, this, this, uh, Demon, uh, Monet's, like, brings up a good point. Is he's like, I think the show is taking a slow course of making Danny the Danny of the comics, mm -hmm. where they could do that a lot faster, or I don't know. That's, he's tricky. He's a tricky character. Um, I mean, if, I feel like it can be incredibly rewarding for fans of the show, people who intend, like we all do, to stick around for, like, the next four or five seasons of things. So that when Danny does become the Danny from the comics, be like, oh my God, what a journey. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we're here and it's great, but it's just such a slow burn to start it off. And when we're critiquing all these episodes in very minute details, it's hard not to kind of focus on the fact that this kid is just dragging everybody. Like, you're just making things so much harder. I am the hand. Yeah. I mean, I think you do a good impression, a good impression <laughs> of <laughs> <You> Danny. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, so we kind of, so okay, we finally see what like st sticks i don't know what to think of him but we finally going to see his death and i don't know mm -hmm. if you later are like yes this is a time that he should die with like you know the black sky or electra coming in and coming to get danny and like actually becoming we're starting to see her become the black sky like i'm more power at least it, i'm supposed to be powerful i'm supposed to be able to defeat all these guys without the help of anybody else and like yeah she's like she goes and gets danny but in the process kill stick and i don't know if you ladies were like oh no not stick and you're like yeah it's about time for him to die i didn't have either reaction my reaction was much more like oh is this where we're killing stick because mm -hmm. you know you know stick is gonna die like he's crotchety he's old he refuses to stop fighting he's lost an arm like the stick is like the knight from uh holy grail where you know it's just like it's just a flesh wound like don't even worry about it it's totally fine <laughs> yeah yeah um so he was gonna go down eventually i think it's appropriate that electra is the one that took him out um but again it just didn't it didn't i don't know if it's maybe because um matt was not there mm -hmm. you know which i think would have been great to make matt have to choose fighting electra or helping stick 
I'm hoping they bring that dynamic in going forward where Matt sees that, all right, I thought Electra was in there, but then she just killed Stick and more confrontation with his internal fight about her. I just wish he had been there and it would have been his fault <laughs> that Stick died. Because so that's what Matt needs is just more like external pressure from the world about mm-hmm. his failures. I mean, April, was that like lackluster for you then too? To see... Stick. Yeah, I was never attached to Stick in any way, so <gasps> I love Stick. <laughs> well, I mean, we love the Asgard. Scott Glenn's great, but mm-hmm. Scott Glenn, no, I, but I like the character. I love the character Stick. I love crotchety old angry dudes. Uh, I love because he reminds me so much of uh, Bill from Kill Bill, obviously. And I just really, I was excited to see like what, like how he and Matt might resolve their issues, or either of them coming to blows. Um, or even to see him maybe get softer around Electra. It just seemed too tidy, I guess, maybe. How did you feel about it, though? Like, how did that fight resonate for you? I mean, it was it's it's, it's a little too quick mm. for who, in terms of, like, she comes in, she just takes all those guys down, and, yeah, it, it's, it's it's a few seconds, really, where she kills them, as opposed to, like, maybe, like, we'll see, like, stretched out just a little bit mm-hmm. before it, he <laughs> gets his plunge. Here's what I'm hoping for future seasons of Marvel Netflix shows. Their chore- choreography of fight scenes is always like top notch. It's always really good. If they could figure out how to weave story into those beats, I'll be just forever grateful. Like, if we could figure, like, if we could have some conflict of characters as they're fighting, of, do I want to throw this next punch kind of situations? Because I feel like, for me, that's what makes heroes heroes is them trying to pinpoint when do I take action and when do I step back and when is the proper time to have actual authorities here and when do I need to protect those people's lives using my special powers. Um, and a lot of the times those moments in comic books happen in fights. Now comic books have the advantage, uh, the advantage of boxes where you can just describe what the person's thinking. It can be an internal monologue or just a description of what's happening. Um, you can also do stills, which is much easier because uh, you don't have to move. You can just see the details of a person's face and, and decipher emotions from that. But I think that there's a way to tactfully do it. Game of Thrones does it pretty well. Um, you can look at Battle of Bastards. That's got really good storytelling beats within the fights. Um, I, I feel like that would really strengthen the characters because I don't even know if eight eight episodes is, is more than enough time to tell this particular story. Um, and we have so many great fight scenes so far. I just feel like we haven't had a lot of great storytelling within those fight scenes. Maybe too much too much action versus substance. I wouldn't even say that. I feel like they just, again, everything is there, just the final blending of it all. Like, you didn't put a top coat over anything. It's just, everything feels really raw, and it's quality. But it, it's missing that level of greatness I think, and I know a lot of people will get on me because they're like, but it's just fun. Like, can't you just enjoy it? I'm like, no, I have to critique it and talk about it. <laughs> if I didn't have to talk about it, I could totally just sit back and enjoy it and be like, yes, you did it again, Marvel. But in sitting here and talking about it and really analyzing what might have been or, or what could still be, because these shows aren't ending, I just feel like there's there's small things that could really elevate the quality of these shows. And that's definitely one of them, is taking the time to show the heroes deciding like is this heroic or is this like are we bordering on barbaric now because they're punching people's faces in and stuff which again totally cool but what (laughs) makes a hero great is that they're not thinking cool they're like crap i gotta save the world and i I feel like some of that is missing Hmm. uh okay april so now we're we're finally getting to what you've been wanting to talk about this whole hour Mm -hmm. is i mean did you i didn't i didn't see it coming i didn't see it coming no not at all I was so excited when she gave that speech because I feel like you could see in the Alex, past- right? Yes. I just want to be clear about who we're talking Sorry. about. Right, right. Um, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the death of Alexander Reed. Yes. But. Um, you could see that the lines were getting drawn and relationships were tense within the hand and she was getting fed up at the end of that episode. Mm-hmm. And then she gives that speech and then to have it cut off by the black sky, I mean, it was a shock value moment, but it's also a downside because I'm like, I wanted more from her. I right, feel Sigourney like Weaver's Sigourney gone. That was we, wasted. That we know so How far, yeah. dare you bring Sigourney Weaver, the baddest mother on the planet, into this show and then have her killed off in such a quick and meaningless death? Yes. I do just... Ugh. Look, if we had seen like a stronger relationship between her and Black Sky and they were bonding and Black Sky is like, yes, I found myself through you and my purpose and my calling... And now that calling requires me to kill you. I know all of those things happened, and that's how we got here. But man, that didn't play out on screen at all. Mm-hmm. And it's really frustrating because Sigourney Weaver is so cool. She's and this awesome. is where I say we really needed a final good fight. I feel like you can, if you're going to kill off a, a villain that quickly, it's got to be like a slap in the face of just like, nah, 
how? How? And why? And every villain we've killed out so far, I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. It's just, mm. So would, would we have maybe even enjoyed, before her death, enjoyed seeing the hand versus the hand like we kind of saw mm-hmm. in The Defenders? Yes! I mean, yes! That's a great idea, Rick! I would have loved seeing that. Just as, Because then it would have given us a better idea of, granted, I mean, the White Hat's already dead, but, or maybe like they could have stretched that out and done it somewhere else, but to see the, like everybody's real, Even just that's Gal your power, Hardy wow, this and, is your power. Um, uh, Alex, like those three kind of feel like the most badass of the group. We know Gal's like deep in her skills and we're com- like, all we've been seeing him do is like carve up bears and talk about being brutal and everything like, he's the lone wolf. Mm-hmm. Fight! I want to see it! I want to see cool, like, fast knife moves, which is what I assume Mirakami's doing just because he wrestles bears with his hands. Like, there's just... True. So yeah, like Murakami, Murakami doing the thing with the beasts and chopping them up and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's it's like a... So it's a very... It's a shocking death, but maybe a little... But, like, there, there could have been... It could have, like, been elevated. Even... With a shock value. Like, either, either that or... Yeah, definitely... Yes, it could have been elevated with shock value. Like, I would have even, like, seen, like, Bucks, instead of using a sword, like, just take your whole hand through her chest. Something where we're, again, seeing powers and some Supernatural. cool stuff. Um, but just a sword through the chest is what kills you. Or even, like, if it could have been um, a psychological thing of poison, which maybe would have been a little out of Electra's style, but I like the idea of maybe trying to milk some last-minute information out of Alex, something more intimate where it was a cruelty that we see developing in her. Cause, okay, here's my question for everybody in the chat here at the table. Do you guys feel like Black Sky is a different character than Elektra? Not at this point, no. no. Thank you. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we, I'm so confused. Like I understand that Black Sky is supposed to be different, but I don't see enough contrast in her character to either see her move from Black Sky back to Elektra or move from Elektra into Black Sky. Um, and that's just kind of been I'm going to say weird again. It's weird. It's frustrating because they had a completely new chance with that character, and they made her into the same thing she was before. And we know that actress can handle it. Mm-hmm. We yeah, Olivia Young's a good actress, it. yeah. So I, it's confusing to me why we don't have, like, like God, even, like, some black contacts. Like, make her go look full black sky. Like, give her black eyes. And, and like, can she float a little? Like, there's anything. <laughs> anything more magical. Dis- we, need, anything. we need more distinguishing be- distinguishment between... Yeah, Electra and Black Sky. Because it seems like she's still struggling with the relationship with Matt, how she goes to his house, and then she's still struggling with her bloodlust and where she fits into all this, which is the same thing she was doing as Electra in Daredevil. Bing. That part. <laughs> how, well, how about okay? So I'm gonna joke around. Well, okay, let's let's kind of, let's kind of move into predictions. But this is a, this is a this is a complete joke because you're right. Elodie Young is a good actress. But what have you what have you had like the the whole orphan black like Tatiana Maslany yes. <laughs> doing doing Electra and doing mm-hmm. Black Sky? We probably would see. I, I don't think it's the acting. It's more the writing and just kind of them not mm-hmm. maybe thinking enough outside the box. But I mean, can you imagine like uh, like the distinct? I mean, because I mean, I just I I finished like doing Orphan Black a little bit ago. But there are moments when you forget that it's all one person. Yeah. I've literally been watching me like, I wonder who this, nope, they're all the same. That is all the same person who <laughs> all you need to stop it. Um, yeah, I, I wish we had the the writing caliber of character differentiation that Warp and Black has with uh, the Electra Black Sky situation. Um, I just feel like Black Sky should have a black heart. I don't think that she should care about anything. I think she should have have and we should see her enjoy the bloodlust. Mm-hmm. I've not seen a spark of joy on this girl's face at all. I know she's in a lot of weird and new things. I know she is childlike, um, but she's just so stone faced and cool to every situation, even to Matt a lot of the time. Um, and it just doesn't. It, there's not a lot of range written in for that character, and it's a little. It's. I'm gonna steal your word now. It's frustrating. A little bit, a little bit of a waste of a good character, but we do have episodes seven and eight that we're going to be covering. So predictions. Well, we don't have predictions this thing. Or we don't have the. Wah, but wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I did it. April, do you have any predictions for the next two episodes? Um. Well, I'm hoping for a really good fight scene, the best that we're gonna have for the season, because. I, I liked the one when they all started teaming up. Was it episode three? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed that one, but I think we can do a little better and have a better fight scene. And I want some more stakes. I want to see someone else 
potentially die or get injured, maybe from even the defenders or someone on their side, the B team. Mm -hmm. Some more stakes. I mean, we've waited for so long. I want it to go out really strong. The bang. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My prediction, I'm most interested to see how Black Sky Electra runs the team. She says this is her team now. She is now head of the hand. But now she says she's Electra. She doesn't say she's the Black Sky. That's true. She goes back to being Electra. A lot of questions there. Can Electra want, does Electra want to be with Matt? Can she be with Matt? If she's running the hand, like again, thousands of year old connections all over the globe. How are you going to keep that together? Um, I'm interested to see her take a leadership position. I just have no idea how that's going to work. I mean, my thing with this thing is clearly they're building up that Matt's going to kill her. He's going to have real guilt. And I guess hopefully that goes into daredevil season three i don't know when that's actually slated to come out but uh the other what i'm hoping here is that we maybe see the evolution of i guess we're going to be going into luke are we going to go to jessica jones 2 or luke cage probably jessica jones 2 right? i think jessica jones comes first and then luke cage i think yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping like the end of this too it's like they 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 don't just stop it but they build the storyline to where they're going into each chapter of those Do you guys want to leave off on a cliffhanger or do you hope they wrap this story up so that they can all go their separate ways? Mm, that's a good question. I'm 50-50 on it. I don't want it to be because it's 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 a it's a world now. Mm. You know, and just to tie it up in a nice bow that doesn't um, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm hoping it, it leaves it a little, little, little loose. Like they wrap up a certain part of this story that gives clarification to where hopefully we see a better evolution of Iron Fist. Like, hopefully no more bratty, you know, that part, that portion of, like, his disgruntlement with the hand is done. So you want to see Danny deal the final blow and get kind of that revenge for Kun Lun so that he can go on and be a more lighthearted human being. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and then, yeah, and then there's, like I said, like, opening certain doors to where hopefully we see, I don't know the name of the team. I think you do, Joelle, with... The dragons? Misty, Misty and yeah. Colleen and uh, oh. Claire yeah, all getting yeah. together. Claire's that becomes like I forget the. Is it the sisterhood the of the dragon? Oh my god! What are the names? We'll talk about it next episode. <laughs> but yeah, those ladies. It would be great if we could get the B team to be their own team, so that they could just be the A team of women kicking ass. Um, especially because I love seeing all those actresses together. They're super great. Um, and I think that the crime that they would take on would be really interesting and different than what we've seen before. Um, they're all. It would be probably closer to Luke Cage, but done in the style of Daredevil, and I'm about that. I want, I want Luke Cage heart with Daredevil-style action. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we are going to be going to watch episode seven and eight. We'll be back in two hours, uh, so come back into the chat, watch. Uh, you can tweet us during during uh, the next two hours as well. Um, I'm sure most of you have already binged it. I mean, this has been the hardest thing for me not to do that for a Marvel series <laughs> And ever. avoiding spoilers. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. That too. Uh, luck- I mean, luckily this week's been the eclipse. It's been the Conor McGregor fight. Mm. But uh, ladies, where can we find you? April? You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at April 13 Dawn. Guys, I'm Joel Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joel Monique every week at blackgirlnerds.com. If you head over to my Instagram, which is Joel underscore Monique, today I'll be live tweeting some fun things from an itch showing. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. And guys, uh, we'll be back in two hours. You're watching Black Hollywood Live. We'll be covering episode seven and eight. I'm Rick Hong. You can find me on all social media at Rick Hong. Thanks for, uh, thanks for checking us out right now and come back. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.